Greetings, this is Dr. Janes, and today we're going to talk about how to remove <coughs> the video static from your, your videos that you're trying to process using Kden Live. Now, when I say video static, I mean these white staticky noise things that just appear. These are actually um, from VCRs because I'm trying to convert uh, VCR tapes over to digital so I can put them uh, on YouTube. But um, it would probably work with other forms of static also. The VCR static is unique in that it's always streaky going across, and that's because the VCR has a rotating head that goes across the tape, and so any noise will kind of translate across the picture in, in this direction, causing white streaky noises. But if you just had snow or whatever, a lot of these techniques I'm going to show uh, will also work. I kind of looked around to try to find something in Kden or uh, <coughs> some other programs that can do it, but uh, I ended up just having to do it manually. And uh, I used several different techniques. And <coughs> on the uh, left hand side is the unprocessed one where you see the uh, very bright white streaky noise across it. And then on the left hand side, I used several different techniques. If you use different combinations of them, you might have different, different varying success. Some of these are uh, a time averaged uh, technique, so when you're time averaging, it will have s some uh, artifacts due to motion. Okay, so now the, the first thing I'm going to talk about is difference subtraction. This is a kind of time averaging technique where, uh, and here I'm going to uh, get the transition. The best way I know how to do that is get a, a title clip and then bring it down, then kill the title clip and just. Pull this, pull this transition down to where you want it, and then we're going to change it to a difference. <coughs> so now the transition is a difference, and we're going to take another copy of our original video, but we're going to slide it. We're going to zoom in. You're going to hit the control, and then uh, hold that down, zoom in with the wheel, and you can uh, slide the two frames relative to each other, just one frame apart and then we'll take the difference of them. You can just see the pure static up on the screen. So we'll uh, take that static and we're going to have to render that and then what we're going to do is uh, take another frame that shifted two, two, two bars and take the difference of them and then we're going to have to, uh, because if you if you just took one static frame, if it's subtracting static from the first frame and you have static in the, in the next frame after it, it will be adding static to it. So we're going to take another average that's a little bit at a different time. And uh, <coughs> if, if you do that and you take these two differences and then you average them together, you're going to get more of a time average. And so we need to uh, do a second average then we're, we load them up, and instead of doing a difference, when we get these two two uh, difference signals, we're going to average them together, and that will give you uh, the difference in static between the first frame and the second frame, and the difference in the static between the, the first frame and the third frame averaged together. So hopefully, the static that's introduced from the other frames will be reduced, and the static that you want to subtract out is going to be. Uh, enhanced by doing this technique, a time averaging technique, because the uh, the first frame will always be in common to them, and if you did that with a bunch of different frames, uh, you know, it's more time consuming, but you can get a better average and force the noise down. Okay, so that's what we're doing right now is creating an overlay, kind of averaging the two statics together to get rid of the, uh, the other t uh, statics that are on different frames and enforce that noise down. <coughs> and once once we uh, once we get through uh, creating this new average file then we'll put our original video on there and try to subtract off this uh, what we hope is just pure noise. So we put the original video there and then we're going to put our averaged static noise on the bottom 
which is going to look just like basically a black screen with a bunch of streaks on it, which is where our, our noise was. And it'll also have some artifacts because, because it's uh, dependent on time. You know, if you're moving quickly in the frame, it will have stuff at the edges. And so it will introduce some artifacts, but, but hopefully this will reduce our static some. And so this is the first technique we're going to try. And it's, it's one of those techniques where you can, you can do it once, and then uh, if it doesn't have the results that you want, you can repeat it over and over again to get better and better results. You know, noise is a statistical thing, so it, it goes as typically the square root of the number of tries that you do, so you'll have to, eventually it's diminishing returns. And I'm going to show some other techniques that are, uh, you know, all, all here's, here's uh, how this fared. We did this a few times, and see it did get rid of the, the white streaky lines here, but uh, it, it's, now it's, it's kind of dark in the background. The noise is definitely reduced. If you s stop the frame and look at it, you can see there's there's less noise overall, and the noise is reduced. But it, it's uh, got these dark artifacts from from the first technique. The second technique, I'm going to show you how to get rid of that. <coughs> and uh, or it could be that if you use the first technique and you just uh, change the uh, the level, not subtract it so much, because maybe it's subtracting a little bit too much, and that's why it's getting dark. So if you, if you uh, because when you do the overlay, I think it uh, makes the image a little bit darker. So maybe if we ha we uh, brought down the, the intensity of that image a little bit, played with that, then uh, it wouldn't subtract out too much. But it's one of those things, every, every type of static is different, and so you have to kind of play around with it because static is, is a type of noise it's, it's very difficult to get rid of and like I said I kind of looked around for different programs on the internet and I really didn't find anything that was okay so here's the blue screen replacement so what blue screen does is you can pick a particular color or some people call it green screen where they you know, have some crazy background in the back. And they'll they'll put a green screen behind them, and then they can subtract out that and put put whatever they want behind it. What we're going to do is we're going to use that to subtract out the black bars. And so, we will take our uh, new process file that's got the black bars in it, and we're going to do kind of a time average technique again. The idea is is that if the if you take uh, a copy of your original video and you just shift it another frame. The static comes quickly, and there's a hole up there because we're going to subtract out the black stuff. Then hopefully there won't be static in the same spot. So we shift it over, you know, one frame, or we could do, we could play around with that. We could do two frames, or how many frames you want. But you know, the farther you get away, the more artifacts you're going to introduce with fast-moving things because now, now uh, if you have something that's fast-moving, it's going to not be, you know, pixels that are near in time. It's going to be, you know. Uh, you will have moved quite a bit, and so it, it, it may not fill in the pixels properly. So we're just going to try one frame, and you can you can also do this technique over and over again as well. And uh, so our, our initial color is blue, but we're going to change the black because we want to subtract out the black and replace it with the black that's behind. Now, of course, you you have to be careful. You you could do this with the you could have done this with the white stripes using using the white and then subtracting out the white, and uh, the variance tells you how far away it's going to replace. So if you have a higher number there, it will if you if you look as I'm changing this number, it's changing the amount of the black streaks that are there, but it will also cause bleed through if there's black that's going to go onto another black. It can bleed static through in that case. So you have to kind of play with this technique and tune it. Try to tune out the, the black on the white that you want to get rid of by raising the number, but if it's too high, then the black on the static on the black will bleed through. And so, well, I guess, of course, it's our static is black in this case, so we don't care too much. So if you tune that number too high, you'll get more static bleeding through then. So you have to kind of play with it. And so we'll take a rendering of that <coughs> and take a look at it. And okay, so as you can see, it has reduced the black static quite a bit. But if you uh, run this process over and over again, you can continue to reduce the static as, as much as you want. 
uh, this this film is pretty bad. It's a very old VCR tape, and so but but it, but it's a good experiment, and it would take a lot more effort for me to get the thing up and running again than it would be to try to save this tape. So and, and sometimes you know the the, the, the footage irreplaceable, so you you can't you can't just you know throw it away. So you see, you do see there are some artifacts though. You see the little colors and stuff when things move quickly, and so that's that's what you get with the time averaging te te uh, technique. Now the next thing we're going to do is a spatial averaging technique. Now this would not have the the funny things that happen in time, but what you're going to do is you're going to lose a little bit of spatial resolution. The picture the picture won't be quite as sharp anymore when you do, when you do this type of technique. So we'll we'll just continue on with where, where we left with the uh, uh, other two processes, and we'll try to clean it up a little bit more with the spatial process. You know, you could try maybe just using this process if you don't want time artifacts, or using other processes, tuning them differently, putting them in different orders. Uh, every static is different, and maybe this wasn't the optimum. Uh, way to do this this particular static you know if you just have time you can continue to try the process in different ways maybe this is why there is no can code for static because uh, it is a is a very difficult problem and it probably needs a human eye to determine yes yes that's the thing I was looking for that no though this is creating some weirdness that you know it's not really quite acceptable <coughs> So, okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to go down and put an effect on this. We're going to distort and pixelize. We're going to put the pixelize on there. And if you look, it's set at 10. And just to emphasize what we're doing here, we're going to, we're going to pixelize up to 20 so I can uh, demonstrate how it, how it does distort the picture if you really bring it up. See how it becomes very blocky? But it's, it averages out the static. It basically takes all the pixels around the pixel that you want and kind of averages them together to create a bigger pixel. And it greatly reduces the static. So what we've done is we, we don't really want to blur the picture that much. So three, I think, is a pretty good size. That is a pixel in the middle, a pixel on either side. And so it doesn't diminish the, um, the spatial resolution too much. But it does do some good averaging. And... Uh, and then we want to do a rendering of that. And I'm, I'm not actually doing the rendering right now. I've already done them before because it takes a very long time to render. So here's, here's the uh, process video again, but with, um, with a little bit of spatial uh, suppression of the noise. And you know, maybe if I had done that spatial suppression first, since it's a very sharp stripe, because uh, I think the, the averaging that I okay so uh, the the uh, you know we're we're using maybe th three pixel size on this averaging maybe we should have gone a little bit higher or maybe we should have done it first in the order since these these uh, static bars are very thin so doing a spatial average on them might might have knocked them down uh, very quickly the, every, every static is different and. Uh, uh, that poses a, a major problem to uh, <coughs> you know trying to to solve this. But uh, so that that's that's a third technique that you have in your your arsenal to try to try to defeat this this uh, evil problem of static on your videos. Okay, and it, it, like I said, that the uh, the t the the spatial average one would not introduce, you see all those funny colors when you're moving quickly? That would not introduce uh, artifacts like that. It would just blur the picture a little bit more. And so e each of these techniques does introduce artifacts that you don't want. So the temporal averaging is going to be the last technique that I'm going to talk about in this video. And uh, basically you're going to take the one video and then you're going to take another video and you're going to slide it a little bit, maybe a frame. Maybe you could do, do this over again, slide it two frames, three frames. You don't want to slide it too much because you're, you're actually going to create these ghost images where, where um, uh, you'll have your main image, but then as you get farther away from it, it would, will start to uh, have like ghost images in time. But it will 
effectively average down the static. And this, this should work with any type of static as well because it's basically doing a time average of, of your uh, different frames. You're averaging them together. And so here we're, we're sliding the, the, uh, the frames relative to each other. And then we, we have our transition here. It's set at a fine right now, but we don't want to do a fine. We want to do overlay. Overlay is going to take the two images and stick them on top of each other so you can kind of see through them like a, a ghost image. And uh, this is a single averaging, but you can do this over and over again. And the more you average, the more it will knock down the noise, but it will create these artifacts in time. So you have to be careful. Now with, with this particular video, there's not a lot changing except for when I, when I come in and out of the frame. But for most, most of the time, the motor's running. So uh, a time average is, is a good way to go about trying to fix the static problem. And so here's the final product after I've done all these other averaging processes. And you, you can definitely see that the static is knocked down quite a bit. There's still artifacts in there. Maybe if, like I said, if I'd done the spatial averaging first, uh, it would have knocked down that, that noise spatially. And then, then when you time average, maybe it would have done a better job of getting rid of it. But, it, but it's pretty good. There, there's some artifacts in there when I'm moving quickly because of uh, the, the temporal type of averaging that I use. Now, when I actually uh, did this video, I, I didn't figure out how to do these techniques, so I used a different technique called masking, where I took most of the video that wasn't moving, because this was done on a tripod, so if you have something that's very static done on a tripod, where certain things aren't moving, I could create just a, a perfect image of it. Just take a snapshot of this, and then put it in a paint program and paint out the static or try to find a frame that doesn't have very much static. And then you can put that, cut out the parts that are moving, create create a PGN file and cut out the parts that are moving and just place that over your original video and keep it until until something moves. And then if, if, if something moves and it stays set for a while, then, then you can make another another frame of it. Any, anyway, so I hope, hope this helps. And... Uh, uh, this is Dr. Jane signing out. Uh, thanks for watching.